If the universe is everything, then there is nothing external for it to expand into. But we know for sure that it does expand. So the question is, what exactly is it expanding into? According to the theory of cosmic inflation, the universe was once filled with large amounts of energy. It was similar to hypothetical dark energy but much greater in magnitude. It made the universe expand faster and faster. As a result, the universe was getting colder and emptier. And then, after growing this way for a very long, possibly infinite amount of time, most of this energy got converted into matter and radiation, which triggered the Big Bang. The Big Bang was the moment when the whole universe was squeezed into a tiny, super hot, and extremely dense ball we call a singularity. And all of a sudden, when it was less than one second old, this tiny ball started to unpack at speeds we can't even imagine. It was so hot that particles were moving extremely fast, crashing into one another and creating pairs with their opposites, like matter and antimatter. When the universe was a hundredth of a billionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second in age, it experienced an incredible burst of expansion that we know as inflation. At that moment, the universe doubled in size at the speed of light. And after that, it doubled in size at least 90 more times, growing from a subatomic size formation to a golf-sized structure almost instantly. After this burst of inflation, according to NASA, the growth of the universe continued, but it slowed down. As the universe kept expanding, it started to cool down, and matter formed. One second after the Big Bang, and the universe was already filled with neutrons, protons, electrons, anti-electrons, photons, and neutrinos. If we somehow managed to observe the universe when it was just a trillionth of a second old, we'd see that it was the size of Earth's orbit around the Sun. When the universe was a mere one second old, it was too hot for nuclear fusion to occur. At that time, its radius was just 10 light years, which is enough to enclose the nine nearest star systems we know about. When the universe was one year old, it was smaller than our home galaxy and unbelievably hot, finally hot enough to start nuclear fusion. When the universe was three years old, it was roughly the size of the Milky Way galaxy when matter started to dominate radiation, which happened when the universe was around 10,000 years old. The size of the universe was about 10 million light years. It would be easy to think of the Big Bang and the resulting expanding universe as an ordinary explosion, where everything is expanding from a central point. But it's not a good analogy. There's a better one. Look at the surface of an inflating balloon. It'll be a two-dimensional equivalent of our three-dimensional universe. The balloon fabric will be space, these dots marked on its surface will represent galaxies. You see, they're moving apart as the balloon expands, but it happens only because the fabric, representing space itself, is expanding. The galaxies aren't moving on their own, and there's no central point for the expansion. The balloon is expanding into the third dimension, and that's where the analogy is getting trickier. Does it mean that our universe is expanding into some higher dimension? If there's no larger multiverse and our universe is all there is, then there's nothing outside of it. Not even a vacuum, which is still part of space. It means there's no point in asking what the universe expands into. If there was a two-dimensional being on the surface of our expanding balloon, they would be able to observe all distances in its surface 2D world getting larger. But they wouldn't see the third dimension into which the balloon is expanding. The same goes for us. Three-dimensional creatures, we see the distances between galaxies growing, meaning the inflation of space, but we can't perceive additional space dimensions, into which the expansion is moving beyond our three. Even if space is indeed expanding into some higher dimension, our current knowledge of physics doesn't allow us to find out anything about it. It's likely to be beyond our comprehension. Black holes tearing apart enormous stars, pulsars spinning at incredible speeds and emitting powerful beams of energy, colorful nebulae with fireworks of newborn stars, galaxies of every possible color and size. All of these are found within our universe, but it's not infinite. It has a boundary, a literal wall. And beyond that, there's an absolute nothingness. Right now, we're going to make a journey to that wall. But first things first, our universe is like a humongous nesting doll. 
If you open it up, there's a smaller one inside. It's a galaxy. Inside that is an even smaller doll. That's our solar system. And the smallest doll of all is the Earth. Each of these dolls has boundaries that we are going to cross. For that, we'll need a spaceship and a big one. It also has to be able to move a hundred times faster than the speed of light. You get on board and start the engines. 62 miles above sea level is our first boundary. That's 10 times higher than passenger planes fly. This point is called the Kármán line. It separates the atmosphere of the Earth from outer space. Now we fly further to the edge of our solar system. We turn on the hyperdrives and fly past Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. We've traveled a distance of 100 astronomical units. One AU is the distance from Earth to the Sun. And here's the boundary of our solar system, the heliosphere. Here, the speed of the solar wind decreases rapidly. First, it drops from 620,000 miles per hour to the speed of sound. Then, there's a layer called the heliopause. This is where the wind almost vanishes. And then, our ship experiences a bow wave. This is where we feel the force of the interstellar wind, which collides with the boundary of our solar system. When you pass this boundary, you find yourself in the dark of interstellar space. And here, you can find two human-made objects that made this trip for the first time in history. They're Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Voyager 1 crossed that boundary in 2004. Voyager 2 did it in 2007. These space probes discovered that the heliosphere is not a perfect ball around the sun. Its southern boundary is 10 AUs closer to the star than the northern one. So, we're moving in interstellar space and will soon approach a stone wall around our solar system. 200,000 AUs further, and there it is. This wall of rock is the Oort cloud. In fact, it's a pile of asteroids that surround our world. Scientists speculate that the Oort cloud could be the source of comets and meteorites that fall to Earth, but they're so sparse that we easily fly between them. Now we're in complete darkness. The Milky Way is about 106,000 light years wide. In a conventional rocket, it would take billions of years to fly across that distance. But you throttle to the max. You masterfully fly past the stars and planets as if on a racetrack. And within minutes, you're at the edge of our galaxy. There's no more interstellar wind. All you see are bright dots somewhere in the distance. These dots are huge galaxies. We need to look at a map to make a route to the edge of our entire universe. You're here, near the Milky Way galaxy. It's part of a cluster of galaxies called the Linnea Caea Supercluster. But even this huge thing is like a little street in a big city. Zooming out, we find Hydra Centaurus Supercluster. Thousands of galaxies on the map look like little dots. Maximum zoom out! This is our entire observable universe. We thought it was infinite, but we may have proof that it has a boundary. It's here, 10 billion light years away from our home. Even if you travel at the speed of light, a trip there would take twice as long as our whole planet has existed. During that time, the sun will either fade away or explode like a supernova, destroying our entire solar system. And if you can live that long and then return home, you will see that our galaxy is there no more. It's long since collided with the Andromeda galaxy and merged into one big cosmic body. Luckily, your ship is able to warp space-time so that this journey will literally take a few seconds. Boom! Congratulations! You've arrived at your destination, the Eridanus Supervoid. Some scientists believe this location is the evidence of collisions of our universe with something big enough to leave such a large scar. The Eridanus Supervoid is an empty and cold space one billion light-years wide. If you think of this void as a cup, it would fit at least 10,000 galaxies, and it appeared after an accident of gigantic proportions. The object that crashed into our universe was… another universe! Yes, other universes may actually exist. Imagine that our entire universe is a huge bubble that contains all the clusters of galaxies in the observable universe. There could be an infinite number of such bubbles. They could have been born during the Big Bang. These universes may be different from ours. They may have other galaxies and nebulae. But these bubbles could also be parallel universes. This means that if you chose cereal over oatmeal in the morning, in another universe, your twin would choose the oatmeal. 
Every choice you ever made in life had completely different consequences in a parallel universe. And because the number of choices are infinite, there's a whole infinity of parallel universes. So, like a regular bubble, our universe has a wall that is near the Eridanus Supervoid. Long ago, another bubble flew past ours. As they approached each other, their gravitational fields began to interact. Our boundary wall began to deform and pull toward the other universe. The same thing happened on the other side. Then the walls of our universes came into contact. But as these bubbles moved, their connection began to break, and the other universe just ripped a huge chunk of ours. A cold void was formed at the point of collision, and that was the Eridanus Supervoid. The problem is that the universe looks the same to the observer, regardless of point of view. For example, imagine a basketball hanging in the air. Now if we put an ant on the ball and tell it to find the edge of the ball, it will start running around it, making an infinite number of circles. But the landscape around the ant will not change. All it will see is a rounded horizon. That's because the ball remains the same from any point of view. The same thing happens to us when we try to find the edge of our universe. All because we imagine the world in three-dimensional space, and our view is limited. For example, you see an ordinary square in two-dimensional space. But if you add depth and change the point of view, voila, it's a cube. If we could see the universe in four-dimensional space, a square might be something completely different. But maybe we can leave our home bubble. The key to traveling to another universe might be inside a black hole. A black hole is one of the most mysterious objects in the universe. They're so heavy, they warp not only space, but time as well. It's like putting a heavy boulder on a net. The net will sag, and the closer you get to the boulder, the stronger the curvature is. Once you're in the gravitational field of a black hole, you can't leave it. We still don't know what might actually be in the heart of a black hole. Some scientists speculate that white holes also exist. Theoretically, they should be born along with black holes. Except for the color, they're the exact opposite of black holes. Nothing can come close to a white hole. At the moment, there's no data on such objects, but general relativity theory suggests they do exist. There's also a theory that a black hole may be a passage to another universe. When you get into a black hole, you can come out the other side through the event horizon of the white hole. So you bypass the boundary of the universes and find yourself in a completely different world. But we may have proof that a white hole exists. In 2006, scientists discovered an unusual burst of energy somewhere 1.6 billion light years away from Earth. This burst was unique. It didn't look like a supernova explosion or even the merger of two black holes. Some astronomers believe it was the birth of a white hole. But because it was unstable, it was destroyed almost immediately. This process was reminiscent of the birth of our entire universe, the Big Bang. So, scientists called it the Little Bang.